Hey guys, welcome to another cabin video. As you can tell by this giant rake, we're getting serious about getting ready for the Wilderness Living Challenge. We're not there yet, but we are in preparations. Jeremy's about to come up. I got my giant advanced trap. I'm gonna use the rake on the trap in just a second, but I wanna take you on a little bit of tour to let you know what I'm up to. So we've got all our other live traps here. These are gonna be good for raccoons and squirrels if they're misfortunate in this adventure we're going to be catching and cooking everything out of the cabin that's what we're doing the willis living challenge out of the cabin this year i want to show you something i brought back from up north God, big giant moose antler we got that at the big bass lake way back i always wanted to bring that guy back and i never had the chance until now and i want to take you guys up and show you uh what we all need to get ready what the plan is for this year on the willis living challenge and catch coyote raccoon hopefully not skunk but skunk's always a possibility it is spring activated so when this thing comes down it comes down ha 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 it comes down hard those are going to be set pretty much daily we want to get a certain amount of food uh not only to live off of if you're not familiar with the only challenge we, we only eat wild foods but we don't want to get food just to live off of what we want to do is i want to send jeremy home he's doing his big wild year He's eating nothing but wild food for an entire year, 365 days. Um, it's not as intensive and there's not as many rules with his challenge as there is with the Wilderness Living Challenge, but he needs to come home with something because he needs to get paid back his time for doing this. So we've got a dry tent here. Uh, we're gonna get a battery bank set up. We're gonna run off the Apex energy unit as well as some solar power and the generator. The gas generator is in the doghouse. We're gonna be living off grid, totally. So the idea is to get a big chest freezer, drop it in the tent here, powered off the generator and fill this as full as we can. So like I said, we've got targets. We can take 15 squirrels each, um, unlimited raccoons. There's no limit on them. Uh, hopefully we get a deer, uh, there's turkey. We can get all sorts of wild edibles. Around here there's black walnuts. Uh, I've already talked to a couple of landlords who've got big giant trees. They don't want to have anything to do with the walnuts. All it does is attract squirrels. And we got apples out the wazoo. So those will be easy pickings for Jeremy. We're gonna be picking process and we're gonna be doing it all off grid, all in the cabin. There's a few things I need to do before I can officially say I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna take a trip right now down to the creek and I'm going to bring the snippers with me and I'm going to clear a path right to the creek so that we have potable water. Well, it's not potable right out of the creek, but you know what I mean. It's something we can actually drink. We've traced this creek all the way up, all the way back, and it's spring fed. It just comes out of the ground. Uh, we just happened to get it further down, downstream. So we have to purify it. But hey, it's a short walk from the cabin. It's just down the hill here. So we'll fill up our water, come back here, boil it for cooking, washing, all that good stuff. I've got my big, big, big ladder stand at the far end of the property for deer and squirrels. You guys saw that one. So we're going to set Jeremy up over here and I've got about 500 acres to play around with for hunting. And it's almost all set up, almost ready to go. Just a few finishing touches and we're ready. So let's head down to the creek and let's get set up. Let's find some potable water. Boy, am I glad I came over here to check for water. We got a lot of water and we have a surprise. Got a soaker already because I wasn't expecting this little creek ditch here. So what's happened is the beavers actually made a dam here. Good news for us, bad news for the beaver. Well, it's bad news for the landowner, good news for us. That means it's on the menu for food because if it pushes here, it's gonna flood this whole area out. And then it's gonna start chewing in the trees, which makes it a nuisance beaver. So you can see right here, it's produced the dam. We can bust up this dam and test to see if the beaver comes to repair it. But I want to clean it out so that it can do a little bit of work here. With all the tall grass, it can't really nav navigate down below here. But what it wants to do is block this off, flood this area up here and make a house up there. It's got a house way, way further up and a dam way further up. But hey, if it's gonna make it here, that's all better for us. So this is our pot of water. I know it's kind of swampy. And if you go up further, even still, here's my stand. If it floods this area out, I can't get to my stand anymore. So that makes it a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean a little bit more out. I'm gonna bust up the dam and we're gonna check for activity over the next few days. I might even put a trail camera here in this very spot just to monitor what's going on in here. That's good news though. 
And now we have access to water, clean up the trail a little bit more, and uh, we can come here, wash dishes, and uh, get water to drink. There we go, just a little break. I don't want to drain all the water. I actually like the water having to be here. I just don't want a ton of water, and neither does the landowner. So, we're set. We're gonna come back and check, see if this is patched up. It's patched up, we know we got a beaver. It's as simple as that. I threw the sticks up there so they don't have to go find them. Hey, we got a beaver up here. There's another run up on the other side. Here, I'll show you real quick. Um, see, it's getting really swampy. It's getting hard to move through here. I do make it out to my stand. Not a lot of deer activity as per usual, but uh, you can see how wet it gets in here. And the beaver will flood this whole area out. There's a spot here coming in where the beaver, it looks like it's coming through here. So that'd be a good place to put that live trap and then try to catch it as it's making its way back in the water. Uh, they do go up on land to get food. Uh, they eat tree bark and all that and then and they'll drag the trees out here and they'll clip everything else and they'll jam up the water. So they really don't like that sound of the running water. If we get another beaver on this season, they'll be pretty pumped. There's tons of meat on a beaver and there's tons of really, really good fat. And I know Jeremy will be pumped to eat it. We love eating beaver. I am very tired. There's a ton of work that goes into these challenges. Tons. The planning, behind the scenes, the organizing. I mean, just to get on the same page with Jeremy so that we can both be out here at the same time is huge. We got landowners have been going around securing permission uh, to get our 500 acres to hunt on, make sure the stands are ready to go. As once we get started, we're on the clock and we're looking for our food. Get all the traps out here. They're ready to go. Still need to get the freezer, working on that. Gotta go check a trail camera, move a trail camera at another, another uh, at the other stand. And uh, gotta get that stove in. Anyway, <sighs> taking a break. Grab, grab a quick snack. Make it back to work. So I got Mark here from Growing Out Gaudi. I don't know a whole lot about solar stuff or battery stuff for that matter. So whenever I need some help, we get Mark to help me. So he's gonna, I'm gonna pass him over to him. He's gonna explain exactly what we got set up through this energy system to make it run last, run and last longer than just one day, which is basically what we get an output from it. So we are hooking up some external batteries to the Energy Apex. Uh, there's gonna be a Wilderness Living Challenge happening out at Woodbeard's Cabin and there's not enough power in this apex to run for an entire week. Even if you're topping up with solar, just based on the time of year, how much power you're actually going to get out of the sun and how much power that's going to be drawn overnight. So we're hooking up three batteries. We read the energy manual and it said not to hook up any more than three lead acid batteries. What we did was we drew all of them down to 10.5 volts as well as the apex system down to 10.5 volts. We hooked it all together, daisy chaining them in parallel and then connecting them to the DC leads on the apex. And because they were at 10.5, they're equalized and then charged them all up as one big giant unit. And so that should give you about 4,000 watts of power. So that hopefully will get through a few days worth of lighting and battery charging. Hi right, guys, next day back at the pond, we've had our browning trail camera aimed right over the water hole I made through the little beaver dam. And guess what? The beaver's not been here. So it's good news and bad news. Good news for the owner, bad news for us because that means we can't eat it. I'm going to keep the trail camera here for a little bit. I'm going to replace it because this one's a dark ops. Um, it's more applicable, applicable. That's a big word for you outdoor channel it's more applicable in the forest uh, on deer trails because it doesn't spook the deer at all I've got trail camera footage of them and they don't even know it's there I don't need to avoid spooking like a beaver or whatever else is going to be using this creek system so I'm going to replace it with um, just a regular infrared and I'll take the dark ops and we'll take it off in the woods someplace else and I'll use this my other time so I don't spook deer with it Plan, plan. And you guys are going to get to see what's on the trail camera probably as we speak, if anything. But we'll keep monitoring the situation. If a beaver does come through here, we're going to get on it. I'm going to be shooting my Bowtech Constitution. It's an American-made bow. I shoot fingers 
and it's one of the only fingers specific bow because it's got a long axle to axle it's uh i think 43 inches so it stands up to my just over my waist here and the reason for that is because it avoids finger pinch when you draw back finger three fingers if it was a short axle axle it would pinch your fingers in the between and then you would get a less accurate shot uh, during the wilderness living challenge the only season that's going to be open is bow we can use gun for small game but for deer big game it's going to be the bow only you can use a crossbow or compound bow or a recurve bow it's really up to you i prefer the compound people who don't practice a lot might choose to use a crossbow or if you can't pull back due to injury crossbows for you but the compound bow gives you a little bit extra challenge but not too much challenge like a recurve bow i know guys who do trad trad bow hunters and they'll go years without getting a deer around here there's not that many of them and they're very very pressured there we go we're set to hunt just over here at the back of the property and the trail camera facing my baited stump for squirrels a tree stand i'm going to call this the squirrel stand so i had the camera facing on here for a while and now you guys get to see and i get to see what critters took all that all those walnuts and apples almost everything's gone there's like two apples left there is no black walnuts left at all so i told jeremy that when he comes we'll go collect a bunch of walnuts and we'll bring out like a handful of them every time dump them down here while we're waiting for deer to come by we can have something to do hey what good fun right pick them off right here and uh, go grab them bring them back base the stand come back then you're guaranteed to have some food well guaranteed yeah it's guaranteed now that we figured out how to do it so that's going to be one strategy we're going to invoke on the willis living challenge we'll see if it works we're going to come out what two feet two feet or so for the countertop we're just going to do something rough rough right now just so that we have a place to do our prep work during the wilderness living challenge we cook over here prep over here uh it's going to be just a rough countertop and then we'll uh, be able to face frame this all in once it's done uh, make it look pretty right now it's just really rudimentary it's a little little shaky but it's not too bad it'll it'll serve our purpose all right let's get a box made Somebody inevitably hates. They want to hear saw sounds. Ping, ping, ping. Swing, swing, swing. Got to get some dope beats. So I know I didn't film any of this, but we got our propane set up here. So this is gonna be the propane that's gonna run the gas uh, oven inside. So pretty simple setup. All it is is a regulator. You guys buy these at the store. It's just a, it's a little simple regulator. It's got an on off valve. And that runs a copper pipe underneath the cabin and it comes up underneath the stove. So it's just a regular barbecue propane so we can fill this up whenever we need to. And then I'll bring you around the front here. And I'll show you the inside, how it's all roughed in. 
so basically it just runs it just runs all the way from the outside to the inside here comes up underground and then it uh or up above ground not under it doesn't go underground and then it hooks into the this uh rv type uh stove so we've got burners front and back and we've got an oven um kevin tested out everything seems to be working all right i'm not going to turn it on now you have to wait for the woods living challenge to see it uh, he said one of them needs to be cleaned out so that'll be on the order for things to do i cleaned off the whole table i got rid of the microwave because i tried it with the gas power generator and it didn't work because it has to be at high rev and i don't think we're going to be using it to be honest like if we can turn this on in two seconds to heat up uh, some food we're not gonna we're not gonna be doing that plus we got the barbecue so this is our cook table here again this is just temporary some cedar that we had laying around um, it won't stay here forever and then on top of that we'll cut a nice big full tree uh, out of some kind of hardwood uh, maybe something to match the, the table that we got here um, and then we'll have some storage underneath there that'll be perfect uh, later on probably put cabinets but for now that's good so yeah I think we're pretty much set to go I mean we could use some wall sconces um, we're trying to find some on, uh, on sale, they're 80 bucks right now. That's all we could find. So we'll have to wait for that. Uh, what else? I mean, there's probably something else I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, I gotta move the freezer. I gotta get a freezer out here and I gotta get the battery packs out. And then we're ready to go. Well, we're as ready to go as we'll ever be.